Welcome to the final session of what has been a really excellent conference. Um, thank you for staying with us. Uh, my name's Ed Yong, and I'm uh, your host for this final panel. Um, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to our special guests, the uh, two quadrillion microbes that I see in the audience, uh, and the humans who've so kindly agreed to give them a lift. Um, so in this conference so far, we focused in really quite intense detail into this microscopic inner world that we're also interested in. But I think for this last panel, we want to zoom out and consider how the inner world interacts with the wider one around us. And by that, I'm talking about funding, industry, media, the general public. Um, and to discuss those issues, DUSCO has assembled this crack team of panelists who will uh, be providing punchy and provocative talks around these topics for no more than five to seven minutes because we're running quite tight on time. And I will hold them to that. So in five minutes, the panelists will hear me <coughs> cough slightly. Sorry, I just contaminated this microphone. Um, and at seven minutes, I will be going to sidle up to the podium in a slightly awkward way. Um, now, we're going to do these talks in three batches. Um, and after the end of each one, there will be a small interlude during which you can ask questions. And I do strongly encourage you to ask questions, uh, make comments, make statements, uh, go wild. Uh, and if you do not, then I will be forced to don my journalist hat and ask dumb, ill-informed, and awkwardly confrontational questions. So, do, do chip in, and without further ado, I'd like to welcome Mr. Patrick Collar from uh, the EC, who will be our first speaker. Thank you, Ed, and let me first congratulate to MetaHit Consortium for this excellent organization of this very exciting third International Human Microbiome Congress. Uh, I'm coming from the European Commission. Uh, for Europeans, uh, Brussels is a big animal. Commission is a very big animal, but I come from the um, a very specific directorate, which is called Directorate for Health Research of the Director General for Research and Innovation. And we have been supporting health research for many years through so-called framework programs for research at the European level. Just a quick overview of what and how much we are supporting metagenomics in the seventh framework program. Seventh framework program is a program that runs from 2007 and will end next year, and then it will be uh, succeeded by the new program that is called Horizon 2020. You can see here that we are funding metagenomics in several parts of the FP7. Health research, four projects, a little bit over 31 million euros. And then there is ERC. ERC has been mentioned uh, by several of the speakers during the last days, uh, thanking uh, to the ERC for their grants, supporting the excellent uh, cutting edge uh, blue sky research nine projects, then there are projects in food, agriculture, biotechnology, Marie Curie actions, and also research infrastructure. So in total, 42 projects amounting to a bit more than 113 million euros. Not all of these are from the human microbiome. I would say roughly about half are from the human microbiome. Certainly, uh, our flagship project in this area is the MetaHit. MetaHit started in 28, uh, and it will end soon this year. It has 13 partners, and we are supporting it with 11.4 million euros. I will not go into details, uh, taking time to other speakers and for the discussion to present MetaHit in detail, because we have heard quite a lot of, a lot of it uh, during these last three days and also before. Just to say that uh, uh, why MetaHit is the flagship project for us, because it's the largest project that we fund in metagenomic area, and because it has brought uh, really some stunning and breakthrough results in metagenomics, which I think are paving the way for the future, not only for the European Commission, but also for uh, the other funders uh, on the global scale. MetaHit is also uh, participating in the International Human Microbiome Consortium, and that consortium, as you might know, has started back in 2008, and has by now, if I'm correct, has eight funding agencies by participating projects involved. Uh, International large-scale consortia are in the place, and this is IHMC is not the only one, but it's one of the first ones, that certainly are there to maximize the resources and capacities and to provide better value, better value for each individual funder that is involved and for, to all the funders together. And they are there to tackle the global challenges. Global challenges require a global approach. 
this is just a list of some of these big international initiatives. IHMC is the second on, on the list, and the first one is uh, from the mouse knockout. And then there is cancer genomics, international human epigenome, rare diseases research consortium is the last and the, the youngest one. So the global investment into this consortia, of course, the figure is changing every day, but it's more than 600 million euros already. The second initiative, which I think is very important, not so much uh, in the amount of funding, but in the impact for the human microbiome, is the IHMS. This is the International Human Microbiome Standards. Uh, in commission jargon, this is the so-called coordination action. We only support it with two million euros, but it's a very important uh, uh, activity that underpins the whole uh, International Human Microbiome Consortium by coordinating, coordinating standardization of procedures and protocols, also by developing standard operating procedures for sample collections, identification, and so on. And this IHMC does not, uh, although it's European supported projects, it not only has European partners, but basically has also other partners from the uh, IHMC. Now, this is my last slide, I think this is the most important slide. How do we see the future? of the uh, uh, microbiome research in, in our program. First of all, just what is the future that I'm speaking about? We are before the last call of the seventh framework program that will be published in July. The call is more or less prepared. Unfortunately, I'm not yet able to speak in details about it. And then a little bit more uh, uh, forward-looking future is the Horizon 2020, the next U European framework program for research and innovation that will run from 2013 to 2020. About the content, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, I come from the Personalized Medicine Unit. This is quite a young unit established in 2011, and before it was called Genomics and Systems Biology. I think that already this shift tells you a lot how the Commission is thinking where we are going. Genomics, omics, tools and technology development, stratification, but not only in gathering, interpreting data, but going to the clinics. This is for us uh, uh, an important feature. And then when I receive this little card, uh, as everyone else of you, reading the cutting edge human microbiome research, paving the way to personalized medicine, well, what else can I say? I think this is also our uh, priorities for, for the, the, uh, the near future and also a little bit more distant future. Um, I will not read these bullet points on this slide, but I think you have heard from different speakers through these three days the same keywords, the same buzzwords, and I think this is our agenda also in metagenomics. Uh, and the meta-hit has certainly with this, this discovery of the, the stratification potential of the metagenomics, discovery of the enterotypes, has opened a whole new area uh, of possibilities for metagenomics, which is certainly a very important uh, a pillar of our personalized medicine agenda. So I will stop at, at this point, um, and well, when times come for discussion, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.